Today we are going to examine whether or not a dog can be a racist. This is a question that many people secretly wonder. And maybe you've observed that your dog treats a different race or ethnicity differently than he treats, say, white people. Or maybe you've heard the stereotype that dogs don't like black people. This is something that we are going to speak to three professional dog trainers of color about, and we are going to examine the scientific data in order to really break down what is actually happening when a dog is barking at another race. While this video is primarily for a common dog owner, if you are a dog fluencer or a dog researcher, a dog trainer or groomer, then this video is going to be especially important and I want you especially to stay till the very end because I have a special task just for you. So if you're interested in breaking down this question, make sure you keep watching. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Jenna and on this channel we break down scientific research in order to inform and educate us on how to train dogs. So if you're interested in a more nerdy approach to dog training, make sure to hit that subscribe button. As always, today we are going to examine the scientific literature, but before we break down the scientific data, I want to unpack the question on whether or not a dog can be a racist. because. There's a little bit of an inherent problem with the way that question is structured, and it doesn't have anything to do with ethics. Humans, us, we tend to anthropomorphize dogs all the time. This means that, or anthropomorphize means that we tend to apply human attributes or behavior to dogs. Race, so we said racist, so race is a human construct. Dogs do not understand um, the racial divide between ethnic groups. But dogs are far more simpler than humans. Their brains are not capable of these crazy complex thinking and rationality. When people ask about racism in particular, it's because that's what they see first. You know, they see that it's a black person that is, you know, coming. If somebody were coming to me and saying, my dog, oh, I think my dog is racist. Um, no, but you might have some things that you uh, need to examine within yourself. The reason Curtis says this is because we must distinguish between the difference of dog behavior, actual dog behavior, and what humans perceive the dog to be doing. And because race is a human construct, a lot of times our human brains naturally project this construct onto dogs. It's something that happens naturally, but we need to be conscientious about it because it can interfere with what's actually happening in the dog's brain. Now, because there is a difference between human perception of dog behavior and actual dog behavior, it saddens me to report that we don't have the scientific literature on actual dog behavior. What we do have and what we will be looking at today is the beginnings of research that looks at human perception of dog behavior. In a study published in 2019, Dr. Carly Beth Hawkins and Alexia Jo Van Diver examined self-reported data from white and black volunteer participants. Now, Dr. Hawkins was very generous in letting me read the entire paper, but it's not open access, so I have linked the abstract in the description box below if you're interested. Now, in the study, they asked participants to report whether or not their dog was letting a stranger pet them, sniffing a stranger, wagging its tail, barking, lunging, growling at a stranger, and they asked the participants to report who these behaviors were directed at. Was it a black person or a white person? Additionally, they measured the participants, the human participants, implicit and explicit bias. And what they were trying to measure was whether or not there was a correlation between the dog's perceived bias against a black person correlated to the owner's implicit or explicit bias against a black person, and vice versa, whether or not there was a correlation between a black participant's bias against a white person and whether or not their dog had a perceived bias against a white person. The published paper asserted, in two studies, we found evidence that white caretakers perceive racial bias in their pet dogs. White participants endorsed the stereotype that dogs prefer white people to black people in general. And reports to specific dog behaviors were in line with this dog's stereotype. White caretakers reported that their dogs allowed petting, smelled and licked, 
and wagged their tails toward white people more often than at black people. As a professional, the immediate response is, no, your dog is not a racist. As a um, up-color trainer, it's a very uncomfortable question to be asked. And it's not usually asked in this way. It's not asked as if people don't ask, are dogs racist? People typically ask it in a statement like, oh, I think my dog doesn't like black people. They whisper it, you know, very uncomfortable to ask. Or they don't ask us in, in general because they know that I am of color. So maybe they, they don't feel comfortable to ask me. But we are aware that people are probably thinking it. So this is a good discussion to have feelings aside. We understand the ignorance or the lack of knowledge that's out there this isn't available this is probably the only maybe one two or three videos on youtube that even so much as address this particular question so if this is the only way you know how to ask the question then damn it ask the question <laughs> well, for me on a personal level um because i have been asked that and it doesn't tell me anything about the dog, but it does tell me a tremendous amount about their owner. It tends to take a pretty, uh, pretty significant toll on the, uh, the efficacy for the rest of the session. It makes me feel certainly very unsafe that I'm now, uh, that I'm in the home of a person who for their part, has a pretty serious prejudice against me um, and probably carries a lot of other um, pretty dehumanizing biases. But with that being said, be very open to the answer. Do not ask this question with the assumption that you're going to get the answer that you expect because professionals are going to give you a professional answer. And if you are asking a question to be validated, then you will be upset with the answer that you will get because your answer should come from a professional standpoint and should come from a place of non-bias, objectivity, and research and science. While the study did find that white people and perceivably white people's dogs did have a racial bias against black people, one of the things the authors put in their discussion is that all of the data was volunteered and self-reported. And so, Perceivably, there could be a social pressure against the white folks to put forth their best selves. Because nobody wants to think about whether or not their dog is racist, so to speak. While the study was examining correlation, the authors did pose some hypothetical causes as to why a dog might be more inclined to growl or work at a black person instead of a white person. White people's implicit bias predicts their non-preferable behavior during interracial interactions. And dogs may learn from nonverbal commands from humans. That is, human caretakers may intentionally or unintentionally teach their personal pro white preferences to their pet dogs through the way they, the owners, behave around black people. Human body language really tells them itself. So even if you think that you don't have any kind of racial bias, if you're acting in a way that is affecting your dog's behavior, which affects how they treat a certain individual, then you really have to check yourself and watch how you are how you are responding. If a person stiffens up as they see a black person walking by, which I've had happen to me, um, people have stiffened up in my presence, even as I was walking the goofiest, most friendly dogs possible. Um, that's something that that's information that their own dog is taking in and making a guess about what could be going on. You can't really say, oh, my dog is like black people if you always tighten up on the leash whenever a black person walks by if you are treating people differently and you're with your dog and your dog and your dog picks up on that then yes i can see your dog starting to react differently we as people are our dog's biggest signaler for how they should interact with the world if you have a racial bias and if you act on that racial but racial bias how you respond to people will affect how your dog responds actions like crossing the street when a person is approaching you or clenching the leash or stiffening up these are all actions that we hypothesize are causing the dog's reactivity but this is definitely somewhere that we need more data but something that is very clear in dog behavior is that dogs can have fear and they can direct that fear towards a person so you might be thinking now okay well Maybe my dog's not racist per se, but my dog is demonstrating fear. My dog is reactive towards these folks. What do I make of that? 
looking at racism versus phobias. These are two different things. Racism is a choice. Dogs do not choose to be ignorant. They just are afraid. The other definition of a phobia is an extreme or irrational fear or aversion to something. A phobia doesn't come from a place of rationale. For a phobia to occur, typically some type of traumatic event needs to happen. There needs to be some form of trauma. Um, and it may have even needed to repeat itself more than once. A lot of times trauma happens over time. Do you actually have any particular moment that you can think or pinpoint that your dog has had a traumatic event with a particular person of color? I've worked with dogs in the shelter that have come from out of fighting rings. Unfortunately, a majority of those are run and participated in by Black people. But even those dogs, I never once had an indication that their issue was my skin color. If, if there were a situation like this, it's, it's very hard to try and pinpoint the fact that, oh, the dog just saw the color. You, as you can probably already deduce at this point in this video, um, you're, you can probably start to see that color is just part, is just a very small portion of it. And in fact, it's probably all the other factors that would have made this traumatic. Humans are very complex. We are way more than our skin tone. Pets, we wear clothes, we wear hats, we wear shoes, we wear all kinds of things in our heads. We are different, um, different ways with different um, heights. Some people have very large beards. I have an Afro. Some people tend to have bald heads. Sometimes people are injured and maybe they have a limp. Maybe they use a cane, maybe they use a walk. We also see sometimes where dogs react to our voices. My voice is a little bit softer than Gio's. And my voice is pretty deep for a female. It does resonate. And so it would be the moment that I spoke when the dog would bark. I can, I can say for myself that Puerto Ricans are very exuberant. We speak with our arms. We are loud. And so if a dog is raised in a household that is white and quiet, it's also, okay, this is, there's so much newness. Again, there's so much going on there. So again, it's easy to pinpoint it as the color, but it may just be the culture, the entire culture, the situation is just new to a dog. What we've personally seen dogs respond to more are our voices, our shapes, but primarily how we carry ourselves. Uh, that I'm moving too quickly or I'm moving in a way that they, they haven't learned to predict the outcome of. Um, like if I flap my hands around too fast um, or if I go to reach into my pocket too fast. Many fearful or reactive dogs are particularly sensitive to prolonged eye contact. This is important guys, and I'm gonna say this for everyone. The way you approach dogs or the way you allow people to approach your dog really does determine how that dog will react to that person. And if that stranger isn't well versed in dog behavior, maybe they come in, oh, puppy, oh, this, oh, this. If you guys can put yourself in a dog's point of view, this is very intimidating. So we have to keep all this in mind. Are they discriminating between a black and white person? Well, first, have we figured out, are they okay with what the person is wearing? Are they okay with the height? Are they okay with the sit? Are they okay with this? So the idea is, can, let's go through the, the list of things, which is virtually impossible, to see what the dog is reacting to or responding to before we say that it is skin tone. Now, the 2019 paper also examined relationships between the people. So, for example, how frequently a white participant was interacting with a black participant in their daily life. And what they found is that the more contact with black people the white caretakers reported having, the less they reported pro-white behavior in their dogs. This is a point supported by Ken Ramirez, who is an industry leader in the dog training universe, and he was very willing to contribute a comment on this topic. He told me, most dogs' fear of people is usually learned as they are growing up. If their owner embraces people of color and interacts with people of color in a normal, relaxed, and comfortable manner, the dog will learn to be relaxed and comfortable around people of color. However, if the dog experiences fear, tension, or nervousness around a person, the dog will respond accordingly. That's not to say that every dog who growls and barks at a black person learned that from their current owner 
or that something other than past learning is not affecting their behavior. But that is usually the first place I would look. Something all three trainers, plus Dr. Hawkins, plus Mr. Ramirez all emphasize is that just because your dog seems to be demonstrating fear towards a person of color doesn't necessarily mean that you also have an implicit bias and you were clenching on the leash. It could just be a geographical factor. So for example, if you live in a predominantly white nation or a predominantly white neighborhood and your dog only knows that neighborhood, they're not going to have the exposure to people of color. So what do you do then? When you have a young dog, the best thing that you can do is expose your animal in the best way possible, in the positive way, give them you know, rewards to everything that they come across. We never want to say that we strive for perfection in dog training or socialization. It is literally impossible to socialize for everything that we can think of with humans. However, I really happy that you said that the 10 minute radius or your suburb or your cul-de-sac of um, white neighbors isn't really the human experience totally. If you want your dog to come to come with you to the cafes or bars, then they have to be socialized to many different kinds of people. So creating situations in which um, the dogs are, 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 in a, are in an environment that they feel like they have control and then exposing them to, again, different types of people. If you do this, then you won't really have to ask yourself the question, is my dog racist? Or try to kind of pinpoint or go down that rabbit hole. Because many times when people ask, is my dog racist? It's because they're seeing a level of reactivity. Reactivity meaning that the dog is acting unfavorably, whether that be, you know, excessive aggression. Um, but reactivity can also show itself as a very extreme form of submissive fear. Oh my God, your dog is freaking out, running away. I am reading that level of fear and concern in their body language, um, where their feet are, where their torso is, um, where the eye, where the dogs look, um, because that's a major indicator, um, where they position their, themselves in space. Another idea Curtis gave in our interview after the recording cut off was that you can take your dog to a cafe or a restaurant, maybe in another part of town, maybe getting exposure to different types of people that are not just in your 10 minute radius and making sure that you are pairing that with positive experiences, not just for your dog. Yes, your dog needs to have a positive outcome, but you also need to have a positive outcome. There needs to be some sort of reward in it for you. So perhaps you're giving yourself ice cream. Perhaps you are having a very deep conversation that is rewarding to you, but you're making sure that the experience is just as rewarding for you as it is for your dog. If you are concerned, if your dog has any types of prejudices, whether that be, um, if you feel like that might be racially driven or if you're just not really sure, a lot of times people think by dragging their dog up to the thing that they are scared of, it's just gonna make them tough it out. Well, dogs don't learn that way. If you provide an incredible amount of distance plus really tasty food and I'm telling you uh, pull out the stops whether that is boiled chicken if it's peanut butter if that's what your dog likes we need to debunk the stereotype that dogs don't like black people because it perpetuates the idea that dogs can be racist instead we need to deconstruct this question we need to reframe this question it is a much, it's much better to word this question to this way, into the two different ways. Is it possible for dogs to discriminate between different ethnic groups of people? And, and then, is it possible for a dog to develop fear towards individuals of one ethnic group? That's how I want you guys to think about this question. If you are getting a lot of good information out of this video and you think other people should also watch it, do me a favor and hit that like button because it lets the YouTube algorithm know that other people should also watch this video. But don't click out. I have another special task for you. If you are a dogstagram, if you have a dog fluence in the, in the social media world, maybe you're a dog trainer or a dog professional of some kind, a canine researcher. If this applies to you, then I have a special task just for you. You see, I reach out to professionals that have a little bit of clout within our industry. These are the PhDs, the veterinary behaviorists, the professional associations. I reached out to them in the hopes that we could collectively put forth a professional and cohesive argument against the idea that a dog can be a racist. Unfortunately, 
most of those organizations either didn't respond to me or declined to comment on this topic. In fact, only Ken Ramirez was willing to give me a formal statement that I could use in this video. Now, there are a lot of reasons why they have, may have chosen not to respond to this conversation. It could be that they are waiting for the scientific data. I'm very much that way. I like to make sure all of the research is in before I form an opinion. And this absolutely is a topic that has no scientific literature on it whatsoever. So I completely agree waiting to, wanting to hold off on that. But if that's the case, I really hope that some of these associations to which we all pay our fees are willing to contribute some of that funding to this research so that we can form an opinion. Or perhaps they just don't feel educated in this conversation. Um, maybe they just feel like this isn't something that they had enough breadth of information on to be able to form an opinion. If that's the case, I hope this video really contributes to that. If not, I have created a very long video with the full interviews that they can go watch. You can go watch this. And if they still have questions after watching this video and those interviews, then I think starting off by personally calling some of these professional trainers that are very well versed in this conversation, reaching out to Dr. Hawkins, reaching out to Ken Ramirez. Clearly these folks have a education in this conversation and I think that they could be a good place to start. And there are a lot of other reasons why those professionals may not have responded to me with a comment, but all that said, I find it difficult to believe that if a client or a patient or a student of theirs had asked them one-on-one, -on -one, is my dog racist or can a dog be racist? I find it hard to believe that they would be like, decline to comment. So with that said, um, I am choosing to hold these professionals accountable. I have listed the names of the people I reached out to, the associations I reached out to, in the description box below. And if these folks decide to come forth after watching this video, then I will happily put their comments in the description box as well and keep that updated. I don't believe we should be silent in this conversation. This question, while understandable, coming from a common dog owner or the general public, we need to be able to debunk it in a professional manner. We need to be able to answer this question ethically already. This idea that dogs can be racist causes hurt. It hurts people of color. It hurts our dogs. And to be silent on this conversation is to be complicit in that hurt. So. I want people to speak up. I want them to come back with comments. And the way we get them to pay attention is by sharing this video. <laughs> Share it if you think it's quality. Share it if you think it's worthwhile. Share this video to give credence to Taylor Barconi, Gio Alcade, and Curtis Kelly. Because by all accounts, they're really small trainers, just local trainers, but clearly they have an education that needs to be shared and clearly the people who are in a place of power that are able to share that information aren't doing it. If you want to have a deeper investigation into what is actually happening when you perceive your dog to be barking at a person of color, I recommend you check out this video because it's going to have the full interviews with the three trainers that spoke with us today and they're going to dive into more science of it and more investigation and they're also going to give you some solutions you can implement in order to help your dog's reactivity. And of course, if you enjoy a nerdy approach to dog training, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you to Gio Alcade, Taylor Barconi, Curtis Kelly, Dr. Hawkins, and Ken Ramirez for contributing to this video. Spread kindness today.